Welcome to Tonopah, Nevada, one of the last great old western mining boom towns full of the history and romance of the old west and home to incredible architecture, amazing historic buildings, there's a couple casinos in town, cute little stores, a mining museum, there's a lot to see and do and learn about here in Tonopah. But what I'm here for is the town's greatest attraction, something built in the 1980s, not the 18 something that has nothing to do at all with the old west and yet is truly truly iconic we're going back to the world famous the truly infamous Clown Motel. That's right, my friend George and I have returned. I guess once just wasn't enough, and as you can see, there have been a lot of changes since the last time we were here. Definitely had a major facelift. Oh yeah, it's got a whole new paint job, and look at the size of those clowns. They're gargantuan. Now, if you have never heard of the Clown Motel before in your life, that's okay. I'll fill you in really quick, really briefly. Not only is this known as the world's most terrifying motel because of its clown theming, and you know, because it's in Tonopah, but it's most infamous for juxtaposing these colorful, happy clowns with its next door neighbor, the Tonopah Cemetery. Supposedly one of the most haunted cemeteries in the Old West, the Tonopah Cemetery contains the remains of plague victims and mining accident victims. But let's face it, creepiest of all, it's got the look. It looks like it's something straight out of Poltergeist. And you can see it all right from your room at the Clown Motel. The Clown Motel was built in the 1980s by Leona and Leroy David in memory of their deceased father who was a clown lover and also happened to be buried right next door in the Tonopah Cemetery. As you can see, they remained a very close family. Not only were their clown loving father's remains next door to their hotel, they also use the office to display his collection of over 150 clown items left behind when he died. Now, if you were to go back and watch our last visit to the infamous Clown Motel, you'll notice it looked a lot different. And it's because back then it had a different owner. What was the guy's name, the older guy? Uh, Bob, Bob, I think, Bob. yeah, Bob. Bob was an older gentleman. And you could tell as he got on in years, the hotel was starting to sort of get away from him, but the new owner, an avid clown enthusiast and collector who moved here from India in 2009, has now joyfully taken over and really begun to clean this place up. Oh, don't get me wrong, it's still a creepy clown-themed motel in the middle of the desert right next door to a cemetery. But now it's an upgraded, much more colorful and exciting creepy-themed clown motel in the middle of the desert right next door to a cemetery. Last time we came out here, we brought a couple of clown-themed items items to donate to the display in the office. And I'm happy to report that the new owner has not only continued growing the clown collection, but he's really taken it up a notch. And now this isn't just the office, it's also the museum and gift shop. All right, let's go inside and check this out, but beware. Some of the clowns in this museum are purportedly haunted. <laughs> Whoa, dude, would you look at the size of this place? It's literally doubled in size in here. Last time we were here, the old check-in desk was right there, and there was a wall here, and now it's expanded into a whole clown museum. Dude, there are so many more clowns in here. Happy clowns, sad clowns, hobo clowns, and saxophone clowns, a butt clown, every kind of clown imaginable. Scary mime looking clowns. For the most part, I like clowns. But I gotta admit, as I'm looking at these more and more, I get why people get creeped out a little bit. My Nana, for a long time, was really into clowns, especially hobo clowns. She actually had one of these Clown on the Globe music boxes. And now I have deja vu, because I think I said that last time I was in here. Some of the clowns here are donated from people's deceased relatives. So theoretically, and supposedly, and allegedly, some of them are haunted clowns. But the best clowns of all are this one right here and this guy right there. Because those are the clowns we brought last time. I like this one. Which one? That one. Dude, some of these clowns are legitimate works of art. And some of them, while uh, interesting, uh, 
I wouldn't want him in my house. How'd you like to wake up to that face every day, huh? Actually, we look a lot alike. I thought that clown collection was big before when it was just in one corner of the room, but it's expanded all over the place. Look at this. I've heard of Christmas trees and Halloween trees. But this is definitely my first clown tree. That is unbelievable. I definitely remember this guy from last time. He was sitting in the corner in that chair, but there's a lot of brand new donated art. That looks awesome. Including the Clown President's Rogues Gallery. Every inch of this place feels packed with clowns. And remember how I mentioned that some clowns are purportedly haunted? Well, that one right up there is supposedly one of them. The story is he was donated by someone who couldn't stand living with him anymore. The owner, Hayne, was just telling us there was another haunted clown in here that would sort of move on its own and keep changing positions. He was a little uncomfortable having it in here in the office, so he graciously removed it from inside of here and put it into one of the rooms we're staying in. Great! I think part of the goal is to one day have the Guinness Book of World Records largest clown collection. They've got 2,265 clowns here. But the current record holder has got 4,348. Oh no, we need 2,000 more clowns. Luckily, we brought some additional clown donations, but I'll show you those in a minute. First, check out the expanded merch area. Last time we were here, I think they just had a magnet business card. I think they had one really weird looking t-shirt. There wasn't very much merch. But that has all changed for the better now. Oh, look at these epic Coffee mugs, giant clown size bumper stickers, car magnets, and custom clown motel art. Seriously, look at the size of that bumper sticker. That thing has got a genuine. Finally, you can commemorate your stay at the clown motel with some sick clown merch. I'm gonna get a mug for my mother. Oh, you love your mom? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love my mom too. All right, never mind, never mind. All right, as much as I love checking out the new and improved Clown Motel Lobby with its zillions and zillions of clown artifacts, it's time for us to check in and check out our rooms. Just gotta grab the keys and off we go. All right, last time we were here, I famously stayed up in the clown suite at the corner of the building. Unfortunately, that room was not available this time to make a direct comparison of how much things have changed here. I was a little bummed out about that until I found out that it was for a very good reason it's not available, which is that it's currently undergoing a bit of renovation. Still looks pretty much the same as the last time I was here. So I guess I'll have to wait for my old room until next time. Dude, just the new paint scheme alone makes the Clown Motel look a lot more festive, even with the graveyard next door. You see they've added carpets to all the walkways, which is good because honestly, they were getting pretty rickety and noisy before and I see they're shoring up all the banisters. They're slowly but surely turning what was kind of a derelict place into the weird, fun destination it always should have been. Like check this out. This was all parking lot before, right up to those posts, and now there's actually an outdoor chill area. You can sit on the couch out here or have a meeting, juggle, you know, clown motel stuff. On our last visit, Oscar and George's rooms were farther down this way towards the office. I think George was room 108. And because the previous management sort of botched our reservation a little bit, Oscar's room was some kind of weird spare room that people normally didn't stay in. It was definitely a little Spartan, a little strange, but uh, you know, it was what it was. The only disappointing part really is that none of the rooms were really clown themed on the inside other than that one suite. I'm pretty sure Oscar's room, which was right up here, was completely bare of clowns, like totally. But I am very, very happy to report that Haim, the new owner, has made sure that that never happens to another guest again, because bit by bit, They've been clowning up every room at the motel, including my chalet for the day, where tonight I'll sleep tight. Room 102. Oh, whoa, oh, 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 yes! That is so, so much better. Oh, gone is the old 1980s carpet. And look at that, new TVs, new fridges, chairs and a table, nice new bedspread, nice working lamps. Check it out, there's a couch in here and way, 
way more clowns. The basic rooms here used to be very basic indeed. No clowns, or if there were clowns, it would just be maybe one or two clown pictures. And I'm talking dingy old thrift store type clowns. This is first of all much more colorful, more clown themed paint if you will. Nice new floor. And this artwork appears to be custom. Look at that, that's a clown motel piece right there. Look at that pizza loving clown. He's so happy and he's got a trumpet. How cool is that? And then on the wall, wait a minute. Amy Winehouse? Is that an Amy Winehouse as a clown painting? Now that's something I never thought I'd see and I've definitely never seen before. Which my friends is the point of traveling. Oh yeah, this is way better. Whoa, look at this. New microwave, brand new countertops. And you can see they're very new. Look at that wood right there. They've just built this. Got a little bit of a towel shelf in the bathroom. That is definitely a new toilet underneath. I'm just remembering Oscar's room that had a chain nailed to the wall to hang the towels on last time. And let's say here, all right, well, some parts of this are still, how should I put this? An adventure. It still ain't the Hilton, but you can tell they're actively updating every room in the place. New microwaves, new fridges that hopefully actually work this time. Custom artwork, new floor. Look at this, I just noticed the box spring has still got the plastic on it. So new mattresses, new beds, new televisions. The last room I was in, the suite had this big flat screen TV like that, but it was broken. When you turned it on, it kind of looked like it was bleeding. This is a thousand times better. Now I believe technically this is known as a suite right now, mostly because it's got the table and chairs and the couch over there, just the one bed. But the suites with the one bed are actually the less expensive sort of standard room here. And the reason that we got more than one room, you know, other than the fact that there's only one bed here and George really doesn't like to cuddle. Come on, George, what are friends for? Is because they also have themed rooms. That's the kind of room I got for George. And as you're about to see, I'm a very good friend because his room has a very special theme. I'm really hoping the clown on the door doesn't completely give it away. Oh yeah. All right, here we are. Oh, dude. How you liking the room, George? George? I'm not happy about this. <laughs> Oh, come on, dude. You got the best room in the house. One of the themed rooms. And it's supposed to be the most haunted room of them all. The exorcist room. Perfect for a church going guy like George. It's an excellent day for an exorcism. Oh, as you can see, George has a newer, fancier light, fancier mirror. He's got the new fridge, freezer, by the way, and microwave. Yeah, the Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah, look at Gandalf clown painting. This lovely art. Ooh, also an upgraded toilet, uh, another adventure bathtub. This carpet is also a lot newer and nicer than the old carpet. And here's another custom clown painting. I don't really remember what the old furniture looked like. I think this is actually newer. They got it, some new used furniture. Newer. You definitely think so? Newer, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and look at this sad clown here. Looks a little bit like Robin Williams. Cheer don't up, you think so? Charlie. <gasps> Dude, speaking of cheer up, Charlie. Willy Wonka? Oh yeah, dude, this is a huge improvement. Colorful paint. Any new paint, actually. Nice new blankets. What do you think, man? It's more clowny. Better than last... Well, yeah, way more. Ten times more clowny. And it wasn't clowny at all last time. I thought you were going to be upset about the whole exorcist thing. I thought you'd be like, dude, don't put me in the exorcist room. It's just a painting, dude. You like it, don't you? You like it, bro? You like it! <laughs> Alright, best of all, for George anyway, supposedly, this is the clown that is haunted. Not kidding, this is the one the owner said he was too uncomfortable keeping in the office because it would cross and uncross its legs. George swore the legs weren't crossed earlier. We'll see, I took a picture of it. I'm documenting, this is how it sits now. You know, and we'll see what happens. You know what, this is definitely an improvement in here. I'm just noticing it's new tile. George's last bathroom, last time we were here. Remember it had kind of like a weird red stained linoleum? Yeah, look at like blood. What are you looking at, dude? You guys want some alone time, or? Yeah, that's cool. You can stick around. Okay. You're just gonna sit right, right? All right, okay, good. <laughs> Less awkward now. Whew. I don't know if you guys remember this from last time, but George actually isn't a fan of clowns. He worked at the Barnum and Bailey Circus sometimes doing security at the venue. Yeah, at the uh, Honda Center every summer. About four or five days in a row, three shows a day, we'd have Barnum and Bailey. And the clowns never broke character, right? The clowns right? never broke character. So they're, they're coming up to you backstage, honk, honk, hey, 
Hey, big boy. Hey, Georgie, you want to float down here? Is that what they would say? Is it? I'm going to assume that it is. I'm taking your silence for a yes. I'm just trying to figure out if there's a Bible in here. We're almost certainly going to need one. Oh, oh, what is that? Oh, nope, but there's a fire alarm. So, you might want to figure out how to... Smoke detector. Yeah, but you might want to plug that in somewhere. Fire alarm or smoke detector. Okay, well, same difference. All right, so now that the Clown Motel has been a little more revamped, it's also become a lot more popular. Since Haim took over the property, they have filmed three and released at least one Clown Motel horror movie. And not only has he tolerated, but in fact downright welcomes different kinds of social media characters, photographers, models. Between the last time we stayed here and today, it's become quite the popular thing to stay at the Clown Motel. I mean, it's still a kooky place in the middle of nowhere, but... You'd be surprised just how hopping it is compared to before. I mean, before it was really dead. In particular, they've really seemed to embrace the horror movie crowd. And along with them, the paranormal researcher crowd. And the new owner is kind of a genius because along with getting your themed room, you can actually now rent ghost hunting equipment to go with it. I don't know much about the afterlife because I've never been there and I'm not in a hurry to go. But I will tell you I've gotten a lot of behind the scenes intel on ghost hunting TV shows and I am quite skeptical. Having said that though, last time when I was in the suite, the TV turned itself on twice in the middle of the night. Maybe not paranormal, I don't know. My friend Oscar, who's a total non-believer and skeptic, claimed that his fridge door reopened itself in the middle of the night. Ooh, hungry spirits. And even though it's only anecdotal evidence, a ton of people have claimed to see weird things coming in and out of the cemetery. So who am I to poo-poo the spirit world, you know? I believe this thing is called an EMF meter. I don't know how to use it. Oh, I guess you just... Just push a button. Let's go see if George's room is haunted. Let me see, let me see. Uh, nothing paranormal about George. Move out of my way, buddy, come on. Official Ghostbusters paranormal business here. Oh, nothing weird. I think this thing's about as good as those Toys R Us Ghostbuster toys, you know? Should've got one of those. All right, let me check this out. Ooh. Uh, uh, nothing. Oh, this is a surefire one. This is a, this is a sure, sure. Blink twice for yes, or I don't know how to do this. I'm not a ghost hunter. This thing even work, you know? Like, oh, wait, wait. Oh, oh, we've got a hit. Oh, we've got a strong hit. Oh, what is it you want from us, old microwave? It was an exorcism, George. Cast out the spirit of your hot pocket. No. Huh? Huh? No, nothing. Ooh, the light, the light? No. Dang, the only thing haunted in here is the microwave. All right, to contribute to the goal of breaking the record and expanding the clown motif at the hotel, George and I have brought three sacrifices. All right, first up, I've got this hand-painted wooden clown that I made in my garage specifically to donate uh, to the clown motel. Double-sided, of course. That's what custom artwork looks like, my friends. Next up is a present that I gave George once upon a time. I gave George one of these knitted clowns and I gave Oscar another one. They were kind of a set. Was it for Christmas or? Yeah. Christmas? Yeah. Was that a great Christmas? Well, it's been in my trunk the entire time. Waiting to come here. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever and think it, you'd come here again? You used to have a little sickle and hammer right here, remember? Oh yeah, I forgot because George doesn't like communism so I gave him a communist clown. Pretty good Christmas present, right? And now he's passing on the joy to others. George is going to say his goodbyes. And then the last item we have is this clown painting here. Allie got from a weird thrift shop. We moved into our house. She put this at the end of the hallway and just leaned it on the ground. She said, oh, you know, in case you ever go back to the clown motel, you can take this back there. And uh, the cats wouldn't go anywhere near it. Not only that, one day I was walking by. Started making a weird noise. I totally freaked out. I was like, how in the world can this possibly make noise? I was really just, I don't know, bugged out, tripped out, whatever you want to call it. And then I realized, if you turn the nose, it's a music box. It's a music box. Think it's haunted, dude? It did make a sound one time by itself. Cats were afraid of it. Small children probably wouldn't like it. You trying to feel for it? It's not haunted. Dang. Wait, 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 wait. Why are we guessing that it's not haunted when we have scientific equipment that can prove that it's haunted? Check it out, guys. Yeah, Science. Good. Whoa. Did it do something? You see you jump yellow? Oh! Oh, oh wow, oh, look, if I hit it, it's haunted. Cool. Unfortunately, when we were in the Clown Motel office slash free museum a few minutes ago, we noticed they already have 
one of these music clown things in there. So I'm thinking rather than donate that one straight to the counter inside the office, maybe we'll leave it in one of the rooms. Nah, probably better to give it to him. What are you doing, dude? George? Yeah. What you doing, man? It's losing I'm trying to figure out what song this is. Oh. It's the clown song. Duh. But oh well, the more the merrier. After all, they are trying to break the record. Maybe he'll trade me for it, you know? I can take theirs, they can take this one, huh? Highly doubt it. Cool trade! We're gonna go make our donations. All right, we're sending in the clowns. Bringing them to their new home! You made? Yeah, I made that one. What'd you just tell them about this clown? I said, the lady who made this is dead. Oh, don't look so happy about it. <laughs> Excellent, sweet. Yes, two more down towards the world record. Ah, uh, see, look at that. There it is, right there. All right. Just bought a handful of mugs while I was here. And now that our clowns have joined the others, we've done our duty. At least in here, anyway. All right, now that we've made our clown contribution, I wanted to head back into the cemetery real quick. Because as you can see here, in partnership with the Clown Motel, apparently the city of Tonopah has been upgrading the cemetery experience. And they've got these little brochures here that actually have a little cemetery map and information on some of the more famous or infamous graves. Sort of topical coming out of a global pandemic, but many of the graves in this first Tonopah Cemetery belong to people killed in a pandemic, although a more local one called the Tonopah Plague. And many of the others, especially the ones closest to the Clown Motel, belong to miners killed in the Belmont Mine Fire. They died in a mine fire underground, which actually, this morning when I was in town, you could see commemorated in both a statue and a mural dedicated to one of the heroes who kept going down to save others and eventually was stuck in the mine himself. Many other graves are unidentified out here. This is that very hero's grave. Big Bill Murphy died while saving others, it said. February 23rd, 19... 11, age 28, a hero in Tonopah who has not been forgotten. But these two brothers that lie side by side actually perished because of an accident in the Belmont mine. Frank was crushed by an ore cart and his brother George was trying to save him and had his legs crushed. They had to be amputated and due to complications, they both passed away on the same day. Here we have the graves of the three Merton brothers. One of them passed away from an illness, another had heart failure, and yet another passed away in another mining accident here. They weren't all mining accidents though. Here's an interesting grave belonging to one Bina Veralt. Apparently she was part of a love syndicate where basically she and a couple of her friends posed as wealthy widows to seduce uh, wealthy men back in New York. And she passed away out here in Tonopah, still very much on the run. No doubt beyond numerous marked and unmarked graves here in the back of the cemetery is someone from the opposite side of the law. We've got Thomas Logan shot in the line of duty by an unruly gambler. According to the pamphlet, he was supposedly much beloved by the local community because he had a lot to do with taming it. And then last but not least back here, we have the grave of George Davis, the first African American in Tonopah, who apparently had the nickname George Devil Davis because he was a much beloved prankster. Unfortunately, there was one person who really didn't appreciate his sense of humor, and that was his wife who shot him in the back while he was at one of the local saloons. So as you can see, a sort of rough and dangerous life out here in the early days of Tonopah even if you didn't get killed in a mining accident. All right, well, the wind is starting to pick up and the sun is starting to go down. Time to leave the old Tonopah Cemetery and head back up to the Clown Motel. As you can see, it's a very peaceful place, but also a pretty forlorn place. If the old timey legends are true and ghosts get out of their graves and go walking around, well, wouldn't you be curious about the brightly colored clown motel over there? Now, I've never even been convinced that ghosts are real, but those who are convinced have no doubt in their mind that the ghosts are getting up and visiting the place where we're spending the night. Oh, what a happy thought. Uh, let me tell you, it's nice to be in the air conditioning for a minute while we wait for that sun to get a little bit lower in the sky. I gotta tell you, the motel is a lot nicer than it used to be. 
Definitely still an adventure if you're only used to the Hilton or the Four Seasons or something like that. But a lot nicer than it used to be. And I wasn't kidding about it being more popular. I've seen tons of people stopping by, taking photos, staying here. I actually saw some people dressed up as clowns, which I didn't see last time. Apparently that happens pretty frequently out here now. Oh, and in case I forget to mention it, if you come out here in June, July, August, you know, the summertime, it is very dry and very hot. We're not far from Death Valley, so bring a lot of water with you. Pretty tired already. Ah, there it goes. The sun is sinking down in the west, and finally, night has fallen. Perfect time to dip back into the graveyard and see if this weird K2 meter thing does anything at all. Normally, I really try to avoid the whole ghost thing and paranormal thing, but I uh, came with the room, so went in Rome or more accurately, when in Tonopah. I really don't think this meter is going to do anything. You think it's going to do anything, George? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's really bright out here tonight because we've got a full moon overhead, or almost full moon. Not to mention these giant floodlights they've added to the clown motel. So we can definitely see really easily out here. I was thinking, oh, it's less creepy because it's not all black. But then at the same time, maybe it's more creepy because of the full moon. Is it doing anything? Nope. Whoa, 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 whoa. You hear that? What was that? I don't know, but it went boom, boom, like twice. There was just a very weird noise out here. So lots of cars going by and lots of weird things. I'm more afraid of humans that are alive than humans that are not alive at this moment. Whatever. That was a weird noise though, just saying. How's the meter looking? Uh, it's looking it's great. Has it done anything yet? Like, has it spiked or done anything? I don't even know what a K2 is. No, it hasn't done anything. I know what electromagnetic frequencies yeah, are. It'll, it'll do something if I do just watch it. That's it. All right, well, once again, we've reached the back of the graveyard. And since I was in here earlier today, I found out that the reason they stopped using this graveyard is because the tailings over there are from a mine. And they were actually so large at one point, they were spilling over on top of some of the graves. And that's the reason they were like, oh, we need a new spot. Now, last time we were all out in Goldfield and we did the Clown Motel episode and we did all that stuff. There was a lady in Goldfield who told us there was a glowing grave here, which basically we debunked with Oscar in the middle of the night because we did see some glowing. But what it turned out to be was an old solar light on this flagpole out here. Now they've replaced it with a much better light. Oscar in particular seemed a little disappointed last time, huh, George? Yeah. How could you be disappointed with old glory, though? So far, that little meter thing hasn't been doing anything on its own. And I know that according to television, you're supposed to ask the spirits to touch it or make the like. We're not going to do that. That's a little outside of my comfort zone. And on top of that, I don't really believe in that. I mean, even let's just say for the sake of argument that you could ask the spirits to do things. I'm not going to bother them. Don't you think they've been through enough? Yeah, if I come on top of the graves or anything, you know. It's not doing anything. Come on, man. I could just hear the voices of all those ghost hunter people in my head like, ah, oh, dude, you're not doing it right. There's totally spirits. We saw orbs. Hey, I'm not saying that the spiritual stuff isn't real or true. I have no idea. And I have certainly seen my share of weird things I can't explain over the years. I'm just fairly convinced that this stuff is junk science. That's all. Just one man's opinion. I'll tell you what, guys. It is pretty spooky out here. Strangely though, I think it's actually spookier in the clown motel than it is in the graveyard. It's just a feeling I have, you know, but uh, I kind of think the paranormal stuff is sort of like that cave on Dagobah. Like what's in there? Only what you take with you. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'll try anything once. We came out, tried something new, wandered in the graveyard, but it's time to leave these folks to their rest and head off to ours. Well, I think that's just about it for today. But this reminds me, remember last time how we opened up that random room yeah. in the middle of the night? We should do it again. No way, dude. Don't you remember what happened? Something weird going on in there. Let's look. Oh yeah, probably not a 
good idea. Never mind. All right, my friends, and now it's time for us to sleep. The sleep of the clowns. You off to bed, buddy? Yeah. All right. All right. See you tomorrow, George. Okay. Sleep well, dude. Hotel and sleep well. All right, and I'm off to my own room now. Very happy in a way that we didn't find any ghosts. Because it probably wouldn't be the most comfortable thing in the world staying up all night worrying about it. Dude, I'm so tired. I don't even want to take a shower. I'll shower in the morning. I don't even want to change my clothes. I just want to go straight the heck to sleep. Oh. Oh, the lights. I'll just turn off most of these. Probably at least leave the bathroom light on for reading. Believe me, it stinks in a hotel when you gotta get up in the middle of the night to use the restroom and you don't know where it is. Ugh. Oh, I can't. And I got some reading material here. You know, just to get in the spirit of things. Oh, ooh. Dude, what is that? Maybe it's the neighbors. Let's just go double check here really quick because I thought... Oh, dude. I don't have any neighbors. What the hell is that sound? Well, it's not doing it now. Dude, I can see the lamp moving when it taps. All right, I don't know if that's paranormal or not, but I know I cannot sleep with that freezing noise. Oh, I almost forgot my keys. Okay, hold well, on. Dude, luckily we got two rooms, so George has that extra bed in here. George. Dude, he's probably asleep. Oh. Oh, George. What? Dude, can I crash in your room on the extra bed? What? Can I crash in your room on the extra bed? Yeah, come on. It's a weird room, dude. Just like neighbors or weird noise or something. Right. Thanks, bro. You sleeping? Yeah. All right, okay. I'm just going to take the bed. Sorry, buddy. Oh. See, so here's nice and quiet, dude. He's falling at the weird room. Okay. Thanks, George. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, sleep well, dude. Sleep. Okay, I'm going to bed. <sighs> Here either. Ugh. Extra blankets in here. Right. There we go. Finally, I can get some sleep. Good night, everybody. We did it! We survived another night at the Clown Motel. Ooh, I think I left George's door open all night. Hey, George. 
Morning sunshine. What? How'd you sleep, buddy? Any ghosts? Did you get haunted? Everything looks uh, the same to me. Everything looks intact. Still got all the uh, clowns. How'd you slumber, buddy? Like the dead. All right, gang, I think that's gonna do it for the clown motel. Time to saddle up and head on to our next adventure. Got links down below for everything from our Patreon with podcasts to our Instagram. Make sure to check out our sick merch at store.randomland.com and you'll have done your duty. You can go home and sleep well. That's my Alicia Pavha. And that was the first shot, so that this is gonna first, go really the first well. Shot. That's oh, cool. that's right, my friends. We've come back. George and I, we were both here last time with our friend Oscar, who sadly couldn't be here. This is too much information. The Clown Motel. Yeah. Yeah, she, the Clown Motel, she. Ah. This is like people's nightmare. pretty bright out here because we have a full moon tonight. Not to mention all the... <laughs> well, well, that turned out. <laughs> Probably. Sounds like more annoying. I used to work uh, at Obama Daily. Dude, this is actually an improvement because I just remembered how your old bathroom was last time we were here. This is definitely newer tile. Remember your old bathroom had like a giant... St what are you doing, man? George? Try not to laugh. <laughs> it's, it's smile is uh... bewitching. You want me to leave you two alone right now? Or... Dude, look at this guy over here. That's one heck of a clown, all right. There's a hair on my hat. Do whatever, but naked not, yellow now. I'm not into that part of it. If I was going to try to contact the dead, I'd try to contact somebody cool like Elvis. Make it yellow. No offense. Now. Oh, that I can't use that now. But I am very happy to report that thanks to the new no noon owner, noon owner, he only owns it at noon. Hey, those chairs are from my old room. Coffee chairs, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. Weird.